Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stone Face Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we're here to watch some more Witcher Mercury. And of course, a special uh, viewing where we're going to be watching the music video, which is sort of the extended introduction, isn't it? In English. Sorry. In English. That's the time I lost my voice when I went to speak. Took a breath, choked up. Yes, uh, it's from. God, I can't say their name. I linked you the performance that they did. Uh, in front of the Gundam, the big old moving one in Japan, mm -hmm. they did a live performance. I think of literally the same song, but it was in uh, uh, Japanese at the time. And this is the uh, release that they did, English version. And there's just, um, I guess, if you want to pay attention to the lyrics too, I watched this once already, so it's not exactly a first reaction. However, I picked up nothing from the lyrics, so. This would be a great time for that. There were visuals I just wanted to comment on, though. So, mm -hmm. I guess... Filler first, music, basically, but... First time for you, second time for me. Alright, that's fair enough. So if we just want to go start with that, let's just go ahead and watch it. I see when they're all taken off the stars So remote, you are dozing off to be sleeping through With a thought, and the future you decide The way you want to try Wherever you choose to stay, off to go Together we'll be better I think, okay, yeah. I definitely see what you mean by the lyrics. It's just like, okay, it's just same context. Well, here's the uh, thing. Why is Ariel buried in uh, vines? That's what I want to know. So, I mean, what's it indicating? Uh, that it's actually organic and growing. I mean, you may have said that as a joke, but that actually sounds like it's plausible. <laughs> See, it's not that the Gundams just take your life, but they are life. Oh gosh, we're going to like into Eureka 7 or something here. Also something to remember, Soleta Mercury is not a real name. It's been a while, but it's not a real name. There was like, um, Airy Shrike or something like that. <laughs> but I mean, clearly, like standing on Earth, it's buried in Earth. I mean, of course they have to go to Earth at some point. It is Gundam. All right, yeah, here we go. We're we're out of the basic intro. And we're going into the popping parts. Here's the basic intro. It's like what a minute, and this is a three minute long video. Also, here's another thing. You notice how much Airy sounds like Ariel? A little bit. Conspiracy theory start. <laughs> what if Airy never made it past the age of four? What if she got put into the gun? Damn. What if it's a clone? Now, nah, like, hold that thought for the discussion cards. There we go, synchronization, makes sense. Lots of places we hope they go, including, of course, more Earth. It just very much sounds like, what's the direct translation of the thing we're saying in Japanese? Mm -hmm. Alright, put teach me how to sing that in English. Right, it's, not, it's never going to exactly fit the same cadence, but they're doing really well on trying to make it match up on this planet where you were made to be born. What does it mean? <laughs> yeah, the name of the song is The Blessing. I need like an action theme with like the music from this exact segment. Where it just like goes that hard, you know? That'd be great. Well, I feel like you could just like replay that one five second loop for, yeah, that could be like some dance level music right there. Just make a two hour video of that one part from the Yendam opening. Right, right. Uh, so let's see. So, on, on talk. So, uh, remind me on names, because I'm terrible with names. Who's the person that Suleta's dueling today? 
God, it's another E name. And I've already said Airy. So I'm fucked. I want to say Aaron. Elon. Elon. Oh, I'm there so, we go. so close with Aaron. All right. So we made the sort of joke of, oh, what if Ariel is uh, has been absorbed into the Gundam and it's like a clone or, or another person or something. You mean Airy? Airy, right. Uh, so what if? Well, we do have Elon here, who is specifically a person who has been designed or augmented specifically to operate a Gundam. Why not? I'm sorry. Why I'm, couldn't it be true? I was saying, I wasn't following what the why not part was. Oh, we already have one person who's been designed to operate a Gundam. Why not a second one while the original character that we saw is now more a part of the Gundam? That, that'd be that'd be a weird, funny twist. But Are you saying probably that not happening? They possibly got eyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. There we go. They got and eyed. What I wanted from Iron Blooded Orphans now. They got eyed, and her mother made another version of her that could operate the Gundam. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we left off last episode with her mother running into the woman. I'm going to air quotes, air quotes, designed Elon? I mean, I don't know what you consider that. Was he like we're, a... We're going we're gonna to get more context for it eventually, I think. But Elon is definitely very upset at the idea that he has been fashioned specifically to do something and is now witnessing someone who appears to be naturally capable of it. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, the only thing I can think of is... Uh, shit, was a big mecha movie a couple of years ago. With the the monsters came from underwater from another from another dimension. Pacific Rim. Yeah, that one, where you had like the the Russians, who have been defending the Russian front all this time, and they're super old mech, right? <laughs> and everyone respects them because it's so fucking old, man, and yet they're so good at it. Uh, my favorite is still number two. It's always sunny on the Pacific Rim. Just the fantastic. I've seen it. Like I said, it's always sunny in the Pacific Rim, and once you see it, you'll understand. <laughs> ah, but before we start talking about Pacific Rim, we do have the duel. And while we've kind of done our uh, conspiracy theory crafting here, let's talk about what might actually happen in the episode. Well, this could be like a fun dramatic reveal, right? I mean, according to, like, Twitter is a minefield for spoilers, right? So it's hard to, it's hard to avoid, but I haven't seen anything. I mean, I've seen people keep saying happy birthday for some reason. So, I don't know why. We're getting the traumatic flashback. Yeah, I mean, I don't, in the middle of a battle episode, I don't know why. People keep saying happy birthday. So, I don't know what that's about. And, okay. but if a lot I of. I had to guess, but go on. Well, just my final finisher in here before you go into your guess. Um,. Other people say this is possibly the episode that shows Saletta's a bad guy. I also have no context for that. That's not a Twitter minefield spoiler. That's just a someone said that to me apropos of nothing. So. I will be fascinated to see if there's evidence for that and if it's actually going that direction because it would be so strange, wouldn't it? I mean, I already said... Episode 2, after we got done reading the novel uh, Cradle Planet, that I believe her mother is the bad guy of the show. So, it would be entirely plausible to me that Suleta does something bad because her mother told her to, not understanding that what she's doing is bad. That would make way more sense, because Suleta is far too innocent to be intentionally evil, right? And she loves her mother. Mm-hmm. So, that all checks out. Uh, I did have something on my brain. Let's see if I can even remember what it was. Alright, happy birthday. My guess is going to be, Elon has never celebrated his birthday before, and he's going to get that as, like, uh, some sort of congratulation message, and he's going to break down. I mean, I don't know why he would break down if he's never gotten it before. Uh, well, it stands to be a very emotional episode. I mean, so I've talked before, at least, about uh, fights should mean something. 
And in terms of that, this fight is definitely about these two characters, their origins, and how they feel about each other and themselves. I just want to. So bringing up the birthday thing seems intentionally like a dig at Elon. I don't think that plays well because we've had no lead up to it. Mm -hmm. Elon hasn't shown any like nostalgia for things that haven't happened to him before. Like we've had personal moments with him where we see him like reading the book That's a Gundarm and things like that. But he's, we haven't like. Yeah, if we had like a scene where he's like watching other people do things with like a longing on his face or anything like that, this I... would be the episode for that to happen. But there's no time for it. Flashback on it. Well, I, yeah, we'll have to see. I hate that kind of trope. We I don't. Know. We don't have time to do it, and we didn't do it before. So our only recourse now is to flashback in the middle of an action scene. And gosh, it's like reading a detective novel where it's just like, well, actually, reader, there was a piece of evidence we didn't tell you about that completely changes the context of the mystery. Or the end of the Bill and Ted movie. <laughs> there you go. Could have done this, but in fact, I went back in time before you did that to leave the key under the doormat. Oh, gosh. So, um, I think we have most of the context for the episode here, and outside of where it goes immediately after that, I think uh, that's all I got. What about you? Let me think. Um, let's see. We have uh, Ghoul left ruins again. War for the series so far. Uh, everybody else in the uh, shoot, what do you call it? Student council isn't really doing anything. Choo Choo hasn't really done anything that I can think of. Not recently. Has the fiance done anything of note to uh, help Celeta out here? Uh, no, I don't think so, actually. I don't think she's, like, actively trying to, like, cheat or anything, at the least. Yeah, but I mean, I haven't. I, can't... I think she's more of a spectator of things going on right now, so. Oh, right, no, she got, like, dragged away. Right? Wait, did she? Like, Suleta went off to fight the match, and she's like, what the fuck are you doing? And then she, like, got held back by a bunch of people, right? Or am I thinking two episodes ago? You, you might be thinking more episodes ago, unless it's, like, a moment of, like, no, don't you interfere with this stuff kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it's a bad well, time to find uh, you're thrown into a prison cell. We'll know. <laughs> it's a on. it's a bad time to have your shit memory come into play. But I most appreciate is we're going to episode six right now. Episode seven is a recap episode. Oh, good. We need it. Entirely poised for my shit memory, which is already starting to fail. <laughs> so I guess before we forget anything else, let's just go ahead and watch. <laughs> You're still alive. I guess the assassins didn't get you. ベルはいつからペイルテクノロジーズに他に選択肢ありませんでしたからベルはバナディスの意思を継いだのねあのエアリアルって機体先輩一人で作ったわけじゃないですよね一体何をするつもりなんです何で娘さんを乗せているんです
based on Cradle Planet, that the mother is going to turn out to be maybe not the villain, but the antagonist. Her goals are not going to align with our pure-hearted Seleta. She's got the cool helmet. Of course she's got to be the antagonist, right? Gundam would never lie to us using its own iconography, right? It would never set something up and defeat our expectation. I mean, point in fact that you haven't watched the original Gundam to know what Char is all about. I Absolutely right. <laughs> the original, the originator of that. Your only point of fact is uh, Miliardo Peacecraft and Vidar. Oh, and whatever McGillis's counter ego was. Right, right. That was two. The mask is important. That's all I know. Well, that's all that matters. That was it's cool. Two in one series that could throw it off. Give me literally any of those masks from Gundam. Any of them at all. I'll wear them. The Ice Prince. What board game are they playing? Oh, uh, it's a thing they introduced last episode. Yeah, this is their fortune telling thing. But the way they're talking about it is like, oh, it's just D D. <laughs> Oh, that's right, she she asked his birthday, I forgot about that. Yes. That pissed him off. He becomes unhinged when you mention birthday. Quick, sing happy birthday at him. <laughs> but I haven't done that since I was four. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he lost four duels in a row, and now he's just out. You know, his dad. You just don't get to live in fancy house. Louder. A gloomy song. But who's I'm gonna sure pay? Sad will happen here at all. Who's gonna pay for my hair treatments? Frontogai <laughs> Once again, how about fuck you, no? It's the hair of anime. Because <laughs> apparently you can just name whatever steak you want. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> You're ruining the vibe around here, Saleta. Oh. <laughs> he seems like a interesting, nice character, at least. For now. 40 episodes later, they're standing each other covered in blood. Wait, is she not dueling an aerial? Ah, uh, that pose. I think she is, but they're considering that. Oh yeah, she's she's going gothic life there. But um, they're fighting outside, and she clearly doesn't have anything for being in space right now. What are you talking about? She does. You don't remember when she saved? Well, that's what they're talking about. They saved the fiance in episode one. In floating in space. In aerial. <laughs> I was just bringing back the betting. That guy will never win. So as this popped up, the fire popped up, my first thought was, naked all for one. 
No, no. <laughs> yeah. One for all, sorry, one for all. Elon just like steps onto the battlefield without a mech and just like, yes, Missouri Smash. <laughs> It's his clone. Oh gosh, it actually is. What? So they're doing a prestige. Okay, I get it. So every company has a solution to the Gundam problem. This one is... Well, the system kills the pilot. So we'll do a moon thing where we just have a ton of clones of pilots. Apparently they accepted something, so maybe they're not actually a clone, but they are a double. I wonder if Elon's 21 years old. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, if in the legality, if a clone has no legal rights, then they're not killing a person with the system. Well, it's up to the series to pop up and see if it's going to talk about cloning rights here. <laughs> I mean, we already know from the short story that she's amazing at flying through space. Because it just mirrors the space station that the school is in. Seem like it's entirely prepped to fire a laser, like the Death Star. I I would not be surprised, honestly. It's got the main beam thing in the middle, and the three rotating bits are all angled up to face towards that beam thing in the middle. <laughs> yeah, it has that weird directionality. Come on, what's your catchphrase? Catchphrase, I'm on my way. No, it's retreat, loot, gain one, move forward, gain two. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, I guess specifically, Elin didn't ask for you. So you'd still be her fiance. Right, things do get a little bit more complicated, don't they? ケットは今日じゃないぞ。あの、エランさん言いますか。LP04。スレッタマーキュリーです。エランさんに話があって来ました。話エラン<笑><笑> This would really be a pain too if they got the wrong Elon. <laughs> Elon just like, oh gosh, she's invading my head now too. Well, right now, yes. This is the most annoying way to do this. He's trying to take a nap. Oh, there's the singing. It's not during the fight. Not fucking trying to kill me, Gundam. This is why she's really evil. Singing happy birthday in public to somebody who feels awkward about it.
I mean, he's only got two Gundam fights left in him before he dies. At least that's what he thinks. I mean, who would know better than him? Well, her stake is obviously gonna be his birthday is today or some stupid shit. Oh, absolutely. Suleta continually refusing to take any sort of actual uh, winning prize. <laughs> Jules brother. Oh, that's some serious antagonist face right now. Yeah, except he's doing the thing from Kaguya-sama, where she holds her cheek to stay calm. Mm -hmm. So. Every duel. Every every duel. <laughs> Same brain. <laughs> There we go, space battles. But yeah, no, I don't think I mentioned it before. Elin's whole glowing red thing doesn't read to me now as the, um, I'm a cybernetic person. That's the end effect of using the gun system for too much. Oh, okay. That's why. Yeah, that could work too. That's why he's a series of clones. Each one of them gets burnt out and dies. That was the whole point that they were trying to get rid of the gun system. It burns people out. <laughs> people should kill people. Not the system should kill people. It was the old speech we got in the prologue. It's also exactly what it, her father looked like. When he was using the gun system to sacrifice himself to save him. There you go, just everything coming out at once. Well, technically, if he wins Ariel. You won't have to use the system that's killing him. This is literally him fighting for his life. Oh, uh, yep. He was also wrong. Arrow would obviously never work for him. In that scenario. Get some Matrix dodging in here. Yeah, here we go. Well, yeah, remember, as for the previous battle, he sets everything up in a long term scenario. So some of that blew up, but there's still enough to be a shield, with no holes. Unless the model's different, in which case I didn't catch it. Those drones really just can be anything, huh? 
Yeah. As we said during the prologue. That was like the first thing we noticed about this game. <laughs> Well, they're playing it out to full effect here. Well, as I said, Elliot, though, plays the long-term game. That's how he defeated Ghoul, as he made it seem like he was losing. And then Alpha striked him. Oh, it's time for a space accident, I think. Again. So she's great at saving people from space accidents, as per the story. Oh, and now she can't fly. Get out of there. She doesn't have a flight system. Well, the flight system got damaged, but she ejected it for some reason. Oh. No. The, okay. Well, that's the thing that the other guys were using in the prologue. That shuts down uh, Gundams. Mm hmm. That looked like Aerie. Does a little bit more, apparently, than shut down Gundams. That was Aerie's silhouette. The Aerie that wears the tiny little spacesuit from the very beginning of the prologue. Right. I mean, that's very interesting, though. That she literally has the ability that the gun, that the mecha thing from the prologue had. Maybe after a decade, they decided, you know what? Maybe it's a good idea. Oh, yep, yeah, he's he's burned up. Uh, or not. He just died normally. Yeah, I don't see you as my wife, I see you as my mom. This is a reverse harem. <laughs> it has been the whole time. <laughs> but she said the same thing with like Google. Minus the understanding part. Right, right. Get your live streaming off of my stream. I don't want my wife hanging out with strange men for too long. Feedback, 
Ah, he's never gonna meet the date. Don't fucking turn happy birthday into a sad thing. Into an execution song. Oh my gosh, we're reaching Made in Abyss levels right here. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Madakana, <laughs> Eransa. Ouch. Man. <laughs> I don't know. I think Made in Abyss at least told you what it was about up front. Hey, every six episodes, we're the punchy in the gut. How about that? Every Meanwhile, here, every other episode, Elon's gonna get executed. <laughs> well, no, that's just every six episodes to happy birthday when somebody dies. Oh, gosh. Well, at least they're keeping that theme. <laughs> uh, but wow, yeah, this is getting darker. Uh, I definitely don't see the Sulata as villain of this, but there are definitely some villains involved here, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that came from. I guess that person was just like fucking with me. I I guess it is maybe just a little bit of you know, uh, relentlessly seeking victory at all costs, regardless, and maybe being ignorant of what the consequences are. But I mean, it's Suleta. Of course, she doesn't know what's going on. Except that when Suleta sings "Happy Birthday," somebody dies. <laughs> So what are they going to do about the next Elon? They said that they have more. So how's that going to play out? I mean, one would think they have some sort of memory thing going on. Shall we? We know it's a. Uh, we know it's a recap episode. I like the the art they do at the very end of every episode. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there's definitely some very good concept art. All right. Oh gosh, what is there? What is there left to say about this episode? <laughs> what? What are? What's the thoughts going through your brain right now, Theta? Sorry, I was trying to freeze frame on the uh, thing because it went back to a black screen. Okay. I like having the art beneath us when we talk. All right. Let me try that again real quick. Uh, no, no, um, yeah, actually, do that again. Alright. Well, wow, what is there left to say about this episode? What's what's on your brain right now, Theta? Uh, I was thinking, I was thinking about, um, the question you asked a minute ago. <laughs> um, how is that gonna work? Uh, I would think they'd have some sort of mind transference technology, because it seemed like she was inferring that experience could be, um, given. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, well, I don't know. It's also I... possible because we have an Elon of uh, the same age. That's the prime Elon that we've seen. We've seen him, and we have this clone Elon. It's entirely possible they have just a bunch of other clone Elons. Mm -hmm. They said as much. Yeah, Dodge has been active clone Elons. Uh, I gave the example before uh, the movie Moon. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. Oh, well, uh, Sam Rockwell is the main character, and basically every other character as well. The idea is that you have a guy on the moon uh, basically in charge of uh, harvesting... What is it? The It's like the surface level of the moon. Regular. That's been... No, that's, uh, that's a different thing. That's a specific name. It can be used as fuel. It's real. Like, there's real concepts about how to gather it off the moon and send it back to Earth. But uh, he runs, basically, a facility there full of automated, um, like, big old trucks, basically, that, like, scrape the surface of the moon to gather it. Yeah. And uh, the idea is, 
it's a short shift, like a couple of months, and then he gets sent back to Earth. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, he's a clone. His short shift is actually his lifespan. So, getting sent back to Earth is basically crawling into an incinerator. But Oof, ow. <laughs> but we just happen to get one who like gets into an accident. The uh, computer that's actually running it considers him dead, activates the next clone, and then the one we think is dead gets discovered by the next clone, and is wondering what the fuck is going on. <laughs> right, the whole illusion is broken. Uh, here, at least, they're not under any illusion, but they are definitely uh, destroying clones as soon as they're no longer useful. Well, no. Uh, as far as like the mind transfer and stuff, I I think the implication was more that there's data involved, and that data might be useful. That's what they're kind of arguing for, but I don't think it was specifically going to be like his memories or personality. But we, we'll obviously see next time. Um, sorry. What was the thing? Sorry, damn it, never mind. I had an opposing thought to something you said, but then you launched into a further thought, and I've lost <laughs> what you said before that I thought was wrong. Understandable, understandable. Uh, so I think another thing mentioned in the episode is, so is that kind of EMP explosion kind of thing just something all of them can do? No. That's why I thought it was super interesting that Ariel has it. Mm-hmm. Because if anybody could have done it, the people at the uh, space station from the prologue would have done it to the other guy. It's that that guy had the tech to shut everybody else down, which allowed him to kill everyone on the spot. Right. So what Um, is Ariel doing with a tech she shouldn't have? Well, that's also a good point. I wonder if that mech in particular will show up later. Like, they, they got to, right? I can't even remember what the pilot looked like to be able to try and finger him as, hey, that guy kind of looks like an older version of somebody else. Right, exactly. Um, so, another thing that was said was also, uh, oh yeah, I can, it's almost as if I can hear your voice now, Ariel. Uh, and they've, always done the sort of talking to each other thing, like, very lightly, but I guess that's kind of more metaphorical. Uh, but we do know literally, Ariel does have a voice or thoughts. Like, that's what the short story was supposed to indicate, right? That they are very real. If they can transfer consciousness, thoughts, or experiences, and Ariel has a mind, and the thing that we just saw Looked like a silhouette of Ari from the prologue. What if her mother copied her as a child, put that into Ariel, and that's Ariel's consciousness, and we have a childlike Ari that's Ariel, and a growing up Suleta as Suleta. Uh, that would definitely be less complicated for sure. So that seems more likely, honestly. You're you're definitely on to something here. Uh, similarly, so what she said about mind transference, I'm going to go back to that for a second with Elon. Happy birthday, Elon, is going to be in the mech, in his Gundam now. In very much the same way that we just posited that, uh, younger Suleta is in the, uh, aerial. I disagree. You're right, but I disagree on why. Understandable. I don't think... It's going to be there because of what just happened here. I think original Elon had the memory of his mother singing happy birthday to him. And that just got sparked in this, in clone Elon. So, I supp- uh, my supposition is all clones of Elon have that memory in them. But it takes, like, Suleta to break it out of them. Right. Well, I meant, like, the impression of the Elon we just had is now in the Gundam. Right, I'm disagreeing with that. I'm saying that that's not a thing, because um, Elon's Gundam... Gund... Sorry, it's Gund... doesn't have that sort of thing. Elon is the... Elon himself is that thing. So, that Elon's dead, that's no longer there. 
now every clone of Elin has that my mother saying happy birthday to me thing. I'm supposing that because I think it would be easier to make the clone of the Elin that we have and just like have them all be frozen in cryostasis than it would be to clone a bunch of Elins and then have surrogate mothers raise them all. It seems like one is more cost effective. We we definitely gotta get more reveal on that soon, right? Uh probably not, no. The one that would have given us reveal just got incinerated. New Elin right. is probably gonna be as cold as the previous Elin. One last thing I have on my mind is they have a whole gosh dang incineration execution machine just set up and ready to go. <laughs> it's probably designed to be for something else. And they just No, have... it looked like it was designed to be human shaped. <laughs> no, but, it was generally it was generally like an ovoid. But, Gen- but if you just wanted to get rid of him, why not just shoot him or something? Because you don't want evidence. I think evidence is probably the big factor here. Well, it's all under their control anyway, and they all the, all the people working on it know. Have you never watched any anime before? I all, know, all, I know. All it takes is, like, one plucky group of kids to find the Elan graveyard, or whatever, and... Darn adventures with hope in their hearts and a song on their lips, you know, it's ah, terrible. Again, I want to roll back to Moon. They incinerated the clones in Moon as well. Because all it takes one plucky clone to find all the other clones. And that's Arsuleta. <laughs> well, no, in this case it would be Elon, but... Right, right. Alright, well, uh, I think I'm running out of topics. What about you? I mean, there's a lot to unpack there. Like, if I was a better editor, I would bring up a picture of uh, Airy as a child, in the first scene that we saw her in, in the prologue, next to that glowy image, a uh, post-EMP, it looked like, that looked like Ari again. All right, some just a, Yeah, which I guess you, the viewer, can do on your own. But, I mean, that's, uh, that's a big thing. That's major. Mm-hmm. Because there's no way that Elon saw that of his own volition. Elon saw it, but Elon never saw Aerie, so... Right, he has no concept of that. Unless... Here's the real reach. Unless... Original Elon is not original Elon, and is in fact a clone of the guy who was piloting the original mech in the prologue. Alright, now we're getting crazy, I love it. <laughs> I mean, that's the real reach. No clues... No real evidence. Just making shit up based on what I see. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's a fun theory. A uh, game theory. Catch you next time. Well, uh, wrong. In- you know, he has other channels, right? One of them is yeah, I know he does. literally <laughs> movie theory. I think he's done anime theory before, too. So. I, I gotta go with, like, the, the most meme one, you know? And also, it appears like that whole organization is clones. Because all those old people that I was calling uh, Space France before all look the same. That's also an interesting point. I wonder if they'll say anything about that in the future. Well, it's very much reminds me of a Star Trek episode where they go to a, a planet where everyone's a clone for a specific job. And it's all they know and it's all they do. Right, right. Uh, So, I guess before we get into Star Trek, uh, let's go ahead and close this out. So, everyone, this has been Stoneface Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we'll catch you next time. See everybody. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below, and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy? <laughs>